Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, again to our Android night. Uh, for, for those of you who have joined us for the past two uh, Android nights, uh, welcome again. So this is our third and uh, final uh, event for the Android night series. So uh, I hope uh, you can also learn something new and fun to, uh, have fun together uh, today. So we often have friends around the region uh, joining us. So please feel free to say hello to everyone. So if you have any questions or comments during the event, feel free to use the live chat section. So um, say hello to everyone, be polite, be nice to everyone. And before we begin, uh, I'll just pass on to Jia Xing to talk about uh, Dev Space SG. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, thanks, everyone, for joining us uh, tonight on a Thursday uh, evening. I'm Jia Xing from the Google Developers Relations team. And welcome to our virtual developer space. We hope uh, you are keeping safe and well wherever you are. And before we begin today's session, uh, let me briefly introduce what Google Developer Space is about. So um, it, we are a platform for developers and startups to connect together and learn from one another. So um, we have a physical space in the Singapore office, but I think as all of you know, uh, due to the pandemic, uh, we moved everything online. And that's, uh, that's how we started our YouTube channel, actually. So um, yeah, do remember to subscribe and support us as well. And yeah, so we regularly host events uh, with startup and developer communities. Uh, so do keep updated with us uh, through all our so different social channels. So you can follow us on our website and we are on Twitter, Facebook and YouTube as well. Um, yeah, and as Desmond mentioned, uh, today is the third uh, Android Night series. So uh, thank you for joining us uh, for the past two weeks as well. And today we have two awesome uh, speakers, Sumya and Kira. Uh, without further ado, I'll hand it over to Desmond to share more about today's session. All right, thank you, Jiaxing. Um, Before I start, <clears throat> I also like to introduce uh, to you a special guest tonight we have here. So uh, she's uh, Kathleen. She's, uh, she'll be joining us uh, as a community organizer for the uh, WTM. So Kathleen, hello, welcome. All right. Hi. Hi, everyone. Good evening. So my name is Kathleen and I'm a technical project manager at Shopee. So if you're an active member of GDG, you'll be seeing me more often starting today as I'll be working with Desmond to bring you guys such cool events for GDG this year. And not only that, we will also kick off programs for women tech makers. So Desmond and I will be providing a platform for women to network and learn from each other through our monthly events in which we really hope to empower and inspire women to thrive in the tech workforce, maybe in the field of design, engineering or leadership. So yeah, I mean, we're very excited to journey with everyone here in the GDG community and we hope to see you guys in our coming events for the rest of 2021. All right, have fun tonight. Thank you. All right, thank you, Kathleen. We certainly hope that we'll uh, be able to look forward to more exciting events in the future. So uh, once again, uh, thank you to all the communities who have helped to share this event. So uh, it is always nice to be building communities together. And if you'd like to work together, please do reach out to us. And also we are always on the lookout for speakers. So if you have anything exciting, interesting to share, or you want to talk about your, your side projects, anything anything new that you have learned, please uh, do reach out to us. Use the link at the bottom, and uh, we'll get back to you, and we'll see how we can arrange a platform for you to uh, share whatever interesting, exciting stuff that you're working on with like-minded people. And also, if you'd like to, uh, uh, Please also follow us on our social media, Facebook, Meetup, and YouTube. So uh, we have a lot of uh, content that we hosted in the past that are still very useful and relevant in your developer journey. So please do check them out. And uh, especially uh, if you missed the previous two sessions of Android Night, uh, you'll be able to see all our uh, content on our YouTube channel. So please subscribe, and you'll be able to uh, be notified of any uh, latest events also. 
So, uh, so let, let's get started with uh, today's event. So today, Android Night session will be on Kotlin. And here uh, we have uh, today is two amazing ladies, Sumyat and uh, Kremenzi. So uh, they'll be talking about uh, Kotlin and how we can able, uh, we are able to use Kotlin in uh, in our development of our Android apps. So uh, we'll start off with uh, Sumyat. Sumat is a GDE for Android and uh, Android engineer at uh, Lomotif. So please welcome Sumat. Hey, hello. Today I'm going to talk about uh, improve Android app development with Kotlin. Uh, hello again, my name is Sumit. So currently I'm working at Lomotech company as a senior software engineer in the company based in Singapore. In case you don't know Lomotech, so we do social video remixing app with over uh, 150 million downloads and consistent appears in the top chats of the app stores, photo and video category in Brazil and the US respectively. So our app is popular in Brazil, Portuguese and Russia. So mostly I've been working on migrating to latest technologies and uh, application architecture, some of the features like music player and video editing. And currently teaching myself MAD, Modern Android Development. Okay. Android has officially support Kotlin since 2017. And there is a good reason for Kotlin. For those who have not looked at Kotlin before, uh, I will be a brief overview for Kotlin development. So first of all, all language takes care of lots of boilerplate code. Um, allowing the developer to spare more time focusing on the business at hand in the safer code and Kotlin is a strong type system so which helps to prevent uh, prevent runtime issues like no no pointer exceptions and then the string format issues and then it's help you 20 percent less likely to crashes For us as an Android developer have been writing our apps using Java programming language for many years and there is a well of existing library readings in Java. So it will be hard to get started with Kotlin without seamless interoperability with the programming language. So for, for those things, no worries. Kotlin is 100% supports interoperable with Java programming language. So which means allowing for a progressive adoption of Kotlin into Java existing projects. Stretcher concurrency. And if you are still not convinced that Kotlin is a great fit on Android, so Coridins provide an elegant way to do this synchronous programming. Kotlin saves us from a lot of uh, corporate health. Um, Meanwhile, Kotlin solves one of the most difficult problems developers usually face when we write in Android apps. In over 16% of the professional Android developers are using Kotlin for their code base. And uh, more than 18% of top uh, 1K apps on the Google Play Store also using Kotlin code. Okay, here is a question. Um, Google continues to support Kotlin for an Android development. So Google formed a foundation for Kotlin to ensure the languages well together with JetBrains. And Google has a team of engineers contributing to Kotlin compiler um, as their full-time job. So Google currently focusing on helping to get the new IR backend and front-end compilers also. 
uh, they've been working on building Kotlin-related tooling, uh, such as uh, Kotlin KSB, Kotlin Symbol Processing. You will learn more about the Kotlin KSB in the talk later. Uh, Google have been improving the way teaching Kotlin on Android and uh, created and update uh, the documents and ensuring that the symbols are in Kotlin as well as uh, create a couple of CodeLab to help you to learn Kotlin. And there are articles and lots of articles and videos are targeting all levels of developer experience and uh, fam familiarity with the Kotlin, to be more familiar with the Kotlin. So this is an overview of uh, Kotlin uh, support in Android. So for the uh, library sites, um, God, uh, Kotlin first libraries, uh, which means such as Paging 3, uh, Paging and Jetpack Compose, uh, the Paging libraries uh, helps you load and display the pages of data from a larger data set, which is from locate storage or over through the network. The JPEG Combo is Android model to get for building native UI, uh, which simply finds the accelerate UI development on Android. In Kotlin KTX. The KTX extensions provide uh, concise idiomatic Kotlin to Jetpack uh, Android platform than other APIs. For example, the, the, the extension functions, lambdas, name parameters, uh, Kotlin, uh, coroutine. So, and then the new extension function in 2020 is would be Play Core and Google Map. So these make using your existing APIs more Kotlin idiomatic way. And more knowledge annotation to make sure your calls to those API safer. At the same time, developers uh, productivity, uh, productivity always comes from the great tooling such as uh, Kotlin Live templates, and which allows you to use the short chain uh, common Android construct, constructs to your Kotlin app. And then uh, Kotlin specific links checks uh, will, can help you make Kotlin code more language idiomatic. Uh, this is especially useful as you um, transitioning from like Java programming language from Java to Kotlin. Uh, looking at the compiler to chain uh, R8 or Shrinker 2 contains new Kotlin specific optimizations. Uh, for example, eliminating instance checks when it can prove that the whole app doesn't need them and Kotlin metadata rewriting that allows the compiler, uh, compiler to recognize and which mean extension function and suspend function which don't exist uh, natively in Java virtual machine. The materials to help you learn Kotlin are expanding. Uh, there are Kotlin vocabulary as a YouTube series uh, that explains specific Kotlin keywords in each kind, each one of video, and then better to check it out. Uh, looking at the documentation um, on Kotlin page, developer.android.com slash Kotlin, you can see all of the latest code labs and guidance for getting started with Kotlin. Kotlin everywhere, the program ran together, uh, Google ran together with uh, Jeffrey, and then the other Kotlin enthusiasts. 
um, in reach over uh, 13K developers. In okay. Kotlin code look like Kotlin is a modern programming language and it has many features that a productive uh, productivity. Um, here, the Kotlin supports nullability in the type system to help you avoid null pointer exception at a, at runtime, and then the shorter center through the lambdas make Cobra a uh, code more concise and readable. And then the semicolons in Kotlin, semicolons are optional. And you can use a string template. Template is uh, expressions in string to avoid con uh, concatenation. So in this example, the call is made as part of a template expression, uh, which is combined and chair alternated to stream format with an elegant sentence. Uh, the less highlights of this example shows using property to provide a level or abstractions over getter setters. The language helps developer more protective and make them happier. So Google is expanding its own use of Kotlin, both on their Android apps as well as on the server. So Google is working closely with JetBrain to make sure the language and tools even more better and better. Uh, since Kotlin 1.4 uh, brings many enhancements. Uh, Coding is a recommended way of doing asynchronous programming on Android for Kotlin developers. It provides a stretcher, easy way, and less error prone way to do many synchronous, asynchronous tasks that Android developers need to call all the time. For those new to Kotlin, the Google continuously expanding documentation, the colon and video help you to get started easily. Kotlin tooling performance. So these new features help you uh, help with the productivity for sure. Uh, the biggest things that will help your productivity is tooling performance. Let's check it out. In Kotlin, grab a plugin to make sure annotation process are more incremental, as well as helping annotation processor order, make their annotation process are ready for incremented runs. And then the ITE, uh, IDE performance. Uh, Google and JetBrain teams have been organizing, combining the performance hackathons uh, for for like more numerous improvement in Kotlin. Can see for like lots of improvements in Kotlin started one point three point six zero and above for the performance issues. On the gradual uh, side. Um, Google working with the uh, graded uh, inks to make the grammatic changes to its model for incremental compilation and a project and instant execution. So the combined with additional caching for faster update checks, and now seeing the now we can see the thirty percent of improvement in controlling experiment. KSB. Uh, many Kotlin builds are significantly slowed down by annotation processor. So and we can uh, avoid after Kotlin uh, version 1.3.0. And many uh, developers like us um, 
uh, illiterate on and deploy app dozens of times a day. Uh, having to sit around waiting for a slow beat can be very time consuming. One of the biggest challenges with compiling Kotlin code is that Kotlin doesn't have a native annotation processing system. So the reason why Google announced um, a Kotlin, Kotlin symbol processing on the February 10th of February 21, uh, this new tool uh, will help you lightweight uh, compiler plugins in Kotlin. So it's it's up to like two times faster. Uh, so you can uh, you can uh, you need to uh, it's it's compiled with the one Kotlin version one point four point three. So. March 5th, um, they announced Kotlin 1.5.0. So you can check it out in for new features. So this is our Kotlin 1.4 overview. Uh, Kotlin 1.4 uh, available through the Ali SS preview program and brings many improvements. For the compiler sites, uh, include uh, language additionals, type inference improvement, and generator annotation in bytecode of Java Eclipse target. For the library sites, uh, they bring common reflection API improving configuration for Kotlin reflection and new contracts. From an early point that Kotlin has supposed single abstract method conversation for interface defined in the Java programming language. So the Kotlin for higher order function natively in here. It does not support or for this Kotlin interface. The notion of fan interface, the instance of like fan interface can be uh, created using lambda syntax and then the, that feature will make exploding Kotlin APIs and Java consumer even easier. Um, I want to showcase in like small addition to the language that this one also powerful. The parameter list not allowed to have a training comma for the last element and 1.4 remove this restriction by allowing the training comma the code look more uh, symmetric and it will cause fewer distractions in code review and adding new entires will no longer highlight multiple change lines. This new feature help with the product DVD for sure. And Google deprecated the syntax classes uh, at started at Android 11. It's been an API with fair problem to begin with, so what should we use instance? Uh, well, developers has tuned to various uh, custom solutions, including threat, higher level library such as like uh, RA Java. And with Kotlin, there is a one more contender. So this is Coroutine. Coroutines are the Kotlin way for doing asynchronous programming with the full support in the language uh, in the library version since 1.3. Here you will see a small example using the coroutine to perform an asynchronous call to receive uh, server-side data. and then follow by asynchronous code to store the data in the local database. And follow by a UI update. The coding code is executed in a scope. In Android, we have libraries to tie the lifetime of these calls into the Android life cycles, dispatchers.io. These features allow you to schedule execution from network and database access 
on the I/O background thread. Uh, async network calls can be made through library like retrofit that suppose called uh, coroutines out of the box. And in here, I'm using a uh, wrong uh, coroutine supposed to store the data on the device without blocking the UI thread. Uh, firstly, I pass a value into the view model copy display in the UI. With all these asynchronous steps, the IDE uh, clues you on an asynchronous behavior with the icon on the left side into your code. So nowadays, uh, nowadays the Google officially recommending coding uh, as the standard way to use synchronous programming in Kotlin. So if you haven't uh, uh, used it yet, uh, and you are struggling with any text and other reason to take the closer to look at Kotlin. So in why Kotlin? You might wonder why so many developers choose to pick Coroutines as their synchronous solution and why the Google recommend uh, on the official document. Coroutines are particularly good fit for mobile applications running on Android. And Stretcher concurrency helps developers scope that work through the application lifecycle and prevent minor leaks. And Callback free, uh, callback free code is easier to read and less error prone. While building supports for cancellation and natural exception handling help ensure that er error classes is traded gracefully. Uh, many of APIs already support using coroutines to enter the world of coroutines. Um, Google created a special made coroutine scope that allow you to run asynchronous inside your models and writing this scope. Um, you can make uh, you can you can you can use coroutine support in various Java libraries. For example, the Android ROM library, which provides a uh, stretcher database access. Uh, you can easily access database without blocking the main thread through uh, coroutines. And for the long, uh, longer reigning tests, uh, are more often modeled through job inside call work manager. With the coroutine worker, you can easily uh, model uh, job cancellation. And some of our, uh, some of the new library, it's a page in 3.0. And then the JetPad new uh, a Compose API is with, uh, heavily uh, relying on the coroutine. So what does this recommendation mean for uh, Java user and people who have been adopt uh, the higher level asynchronous programming library? The great thing about the Coroutine library is that it makes the entire possible to write interest support for both libraries. Uh, for example, paging will ship uh, with the RA Java, and then the listen listenable future compatible APIs. Conversely, for libraries that have not yet adopted Coroutines, you can use uh, many that body adapters, such as when the converter text-based API from Google Play service to coding suspend calls. So here is uh, some of the resources from, you can you can check it out on the uh, developer.android.kotlin uh, page. So, yep. Any question?
Thank you, Sumiat. <laughs> All right. Now, it seems that we don't have a question, but we have a comment here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I use Rx. <laughs> well, what, what do you think of uh, Rx Java's with uh, versus coroutines like? Um, of course, I I should I I also use uh, Rx Java before. Uh, mm -hmm. Exactly in 2000, still 2018, after the Google intro started introduce Kotlin Coroutine, then I started uh, steady. So Kotlin Coroutine is a bit uh, more easier for for us developer. It's more readable, and mm -hmm. especially Kotlin Flow. So it's like more readable, more easy level. You uh, in RA Java, you have to design it's a uh, observe level or flow level or something like that. So you maybe have like. You may need to stick that for the learning curve. So it's like what what the what's the flow level, how like the the observable works, something like that. In coding, you don't need to know. In flow, you just say emit whatever you want, something like right. that. So yeah. So I personally the coding coding is like the compared to their performance, it's also same. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, but uh, I I think I think the only uh, drawback is that we, we can only use coroutines in Kotlin code. Is, is that is that right? Uh, coroutine. So, so right? if we have like Java Java code, we, we we cannot use coroutines, right? Of course, coroutine is like Kotlin supports library, mm -hmm. so you cannot use in Java uh, project. But nowadays, uh, all of the projects are going to the multi platform. So you better do you you better you maybe choose the Kotlin language lah. For <laughs> in those case, you cannot okay. use R and Java. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we have one question here. Well, what do you like about uh, the new Kotlin release? Oh, I just check it out. Uh, the, it was released on the uh, May. It was yesterday. So it's like uh, I saw the loss of like uh, I just read through and saw the loss of performance and then the big time steep uh, uh, speed up. Yeah. So for those things, you better do like read it, read it on more the like document. I also haven't explored it yet. <laughs> yeah, it's so new, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I got to make a note to, 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 to read up. Mm -hmm. All right. OK. Yeah. Looks like we don't have any more questions. So uh, thank you, Sumyat. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you later. All right. Um, up next, we'll have uh, Krimiza from, uh, she's an uh, Android engineer as well. And she'll be, uh, today she'll be talking about how we can uh, interop uh, Java and uh, Kotlin together and the little got charts that we should take note of when we are um, mixing the two languages. So uh, welcome. Hello. Hello, right. thank you. Away. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for finding time and joining uh, this, uh, uh, this session. So today I would like to talk about Kotlin and uh, Java interoperability. So um, now, like what, like we, I feel like in the first impression, maybe everyone thinks like, uh, what can be, we can learn something new more about like, in this interoperabilities uh, features and um, what can be new, right? So I thought so too, but before I got a very huge application and uh, right now uh, all this new modern um, architecture, which is modular architecture where like you can work on uh, separate models where you, you can have um, different features in different models and they work independently when you are teammates, right? And if we imagine that uh, you have a very huge application which was written in Java, but now the business solution or business requirements like don't rewrite everything what was written in Java, but continue to work on, on Kotlin, so adding up on top of the uh, Java code, Kotlin code, and they keep continuing on it, right? Uh, there is a no problem because uh, we, you can follow this modular architecture and whatsoever. But um, and then because uh, Kotlin was started to implement after Java, 
uh, we we have a lot of uh, tools like converting Java to Kotlin. So it means like if we are writing something in Kotlin, because it's new language, uh, newer language, and the, the Kotlin was developed to be interoperable with Java. Uh, it has a lot of like cool functions, like for example, in Android Studio, we have this converting Java to Kotlin with one click or something like that. But because uh, maybe some new features or new things that uh, you have implemented in Kotlin, you need to connect it from Java side, for example, like uh, in um, in modular uh, application, what well, you follow this modular architecture. So you have written something new, cool, or something base in Kotlin. But uh, for uh, and uh, your feature, which was written in Java, doesn't have it. So how are you going to access that? So that was for me the challenging parts and interesting parts that I've learned uh, connecting Java uh, Kotlin code from Java. Right. So here. Uh, what can help you? It's uh, first of all, there are very useful uh, annotations. So first of all, um, we can talk about uh, Java JVM name architecture. Wait, uh, annotation, sorry. And um, here our here I can show that our usual um, function get my example and which is returning the string, right? And in Java, we supposed to have the uh, same uh, same understanding when we're calling it, right? Uh, when we compiler understand that. But if we are going to use a Java uh, JVM annotation, uh, we can sometimes uh, rename this kind of uh, functions names. Why do we need that? Uh, uh, first of all, uh, you may you might have in your local model in Java model the same. Uh, feature or same <laughs> class or uh, exactly the same name kind of name uh, methods and functions. So to uh, to differentiate that, you can use uh, this annotation to rename the file name, rename the uh, field name, function name, class name, and what's all over. Um, if in Kotlin uh, we can use uh, we can define the collections like that, uh, items and items, but and we can see that there are two different items because the types are different. And uh, in Java, it can be a problem because uh, usually uh, in Java, we don't know what kind of collection inside, like it's strings or ints. So to make sure that um, when we are calling this uh, variables from Java, um, we can rename that differently so the compiler uh, when we are calling them there won't be any kind of confusions what to use and what to call and then another thing we can talk about uh, when we are uh, calling uh, java jvm name annotation in our fields like country for example when we define um, variable in kotlin we don't need to write this boilerplate code like getters and setters but uh, sometimes um, we need to understand that by requirements we want to rename our uh, uh, getter and the setter name for example in java because maybe you have in your um, in java maybe you have uh, get country and set country kind of uh, method but in Kotlin, you're calling country variable and automatically it's going to be get country and set country. So you can differentiate as these methods as well uh, and then name that in Kotlin file. <laughs> and uh, another thing is cool about Kotlin feature, which is um, overloading. So sometimes we can um, um, define the function and the parameters can be default. For example, like uh, we, we can have a lot of default values and it can be like null, false. And here we can say like, if we're sending country, we can, the default name of country is Singapore and city Singapore. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to override it, you can just send the country or city, but Java doesn't understand that this is new cool feature of Kotlin. <laughs> so how are we going to handle that if uh, we are going to call this kind of method uh, from Java class. 
and um, usually this uh, NGVM uh, overloads annotation helps. So, and sometimes we are like not sometimes like we can use this uh, JVM overloads not only in functions as in in constructors as well because uh, in Java if we are going to have several constructors we need to rewrite like a name in constructor and uh, in the second constructor we are going to have name and uh, last name or age and whatsoever but in Kotlin we are we can write everything in one line <laughs> and define some default val um, values or make it nullable. So let's talk about exceptions. Mm, and uh, when uh, we are writing exceptions in Kotlin, it's uh, very easy. We just define the functions and throw the exceptions if it ha happens. But in Java, we can't do that. We need to uh, define the exceptions when we are um, defining the method, when we are giving a name for the method, right? So uh, that's why uh, to, to make it easier to Java understand the Kotlin uh, code, we need to use throws annotation. Then uh, when we are compiling it and calling uh, this method from Java class, we immediately and Java class immediately understands this method is going to throw any exception. So, and uh, it can be different kinds of exceptions. For example, here's IO exception and, um, and uh, read exception and any other exceptions that you can define that. And uh, what is the cool thing <laughs> here in um, uh, Kotlin? I really loved it. It was um, companion object, object, which is like uh, when we are using st static variables, static classes in Java. Uh, it was a little bit different how we used in Kotlin, right? So to differentiate and understand how we are going to use uh, this static classes in Java, how we need to um, define that in our Kotlin class. So we have these two annotations, which is JVM fields and JVM statics. For example, in, in, in Kotlin, um, we have component object and, and we have static get country by area uh, functions. And uh, as a constant, I have like uh, Kazakhstan, but uh, by code, we can understand that this is a static class, maybe. But after compilation, uh, without any kind of annotation, we can see that it's not getting that as a static class. Uh, it's calling the example class and calling the companion object, which is a wrapper in Kotlin, and call, calling the get country by area and functions, and uh, are using get set methods, calling the variable. So what? will change if we are using this annotations. So when we use this annotations, uh, it immediately understands that uh, get country by, by area functions and Kazakhstan as a variable are static variables and static uh, functions. And <laughs> another very cool feature everyone loves in Kotlin, it's nullable, nullability. But we don't have that in Java. Uh, so how we can make sure that Java understands it correctly? It's by using nullable annotations. So for example, uh, if we have this uh, nullable function and calling it from Java without any kind of annotation, um, we can yeah. get an error. Uh, but if we are using nullable, uh, it will not give any error. So we can just directly check if it's null or not null and uh, do with this variable, what we want to do or parameter. So uh, in Kotlin, we have a different type of um, keywords. So if um, there are, we can't use as a variable names in Java or in Kotlin, any uh, hard keywords. So in Java, we can't, when we understand that we are working with Java and uh, Kotlin together, in Java, we can't have all this uh, keywords, hard keywords as a parameter name or function name and whatsoever. But as a soft keywords, modifier keywords, maybe we can have them. But um, as a uh, engineer, I would recommend don't use them as well. <laughs> there are so many words and like <laughs> symbols that we can use that. 
and um, uh, this is my Twitter. And um, I think this is what I have for you today to share. Hopefully, it was useful. And thank you <laughs> for being with me. Thank you, Carmenza. <clears throat> I thank you for this uh, nice short little session. So uh, we have some questions right here. I think yeah, uh, sure. I think they, they are they are quite interesting. So for SDK developers, is there any mm -hmm. suggestions on how to flag down documentation gaps during code reviews to nudge engineers to update function documentations? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I know that when we are migrating the code uh, between, uh, like, we usually use more migra uh, migration annotation. So everyone understands this migrated, but uh, for documentations, I, I do believe like I have used only like Java doc annotations that can be automated to document that. But for Kotlin, it's a good question. <laughs> I'll be looking into that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Oh, there's a there's another question as well. So how does Java interpret silk classes and interfaces in Kotlin? Mm. Mm. Uh, mm. Yeah, I didn't think about that. <laughs> uh, well, mostly, um, I, I, I do believe in, uh, with interfaces, uh, there is a no problem that we need mm -hmm. to, like, we can just, uh, it, it's going to be interpreted and inter interface, but with sealed class, I think um, uh, th uh, there should be uh, uh, special annotations that we can make sure that it's going to be, uh, it's going to use it properly. So maybe it's a, uh, good topic for our next session that I can look at and prepare for you. <laughs> I'm just going to make a guess here that um, uh, for silk class, uh, it actually gets compiled down to uh, uh, abstract classes with uh, private constructors and uh, and and the, the different uh, child classes is the implementation of the abstract class. But I, I think that, that's just a guess here <laughs> as to how, how I would think the Kotlin will, will uh, mm -hmm. compile compile this code down to the java bytecode <laughs> mm -hmm. but, but i think it, it should be interesting to, to look further so we have another question so for code bases with uh, java and kotlin code uh, which documentation framework do we use uh, um i i've never used docker previously we were using only java doc so um, as like julia asked previously i think this is a good topic that we can look deeper and research deeper yeah <laughs> <laughs> cool cool yeah usually i just uh write my uh comments in just like you know the double slash or, or the usual java doc style no? yeah. <laughs> right um ah yes <laughs> yeah we are hiring we are hiring a lot please uh it doesn't matter which location you are in now, right now. <laughs> Please feel free to reach me out, and we are hiring. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, everyone is hiring everywhere. <laughs> Do you know how to use the JVM in nine? Can, uh, uh, can, uh, can can you show? Um, um, I think that uh, the sealed class interfaces and this uh, JVM in line is a good topic for my next session, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you mm -hmm. for question, Manish. Okay, cool. So um, I guess we, we've come to this uh, the end of this today tonight's very short session. So uh, thank you again, uh, Kremza. So um, mm -hmm. we'll be having a, a very short quiz as well today. So uh, I hope everyone has been listening and uh, looking forward to this uh, quiz section. So uh, hold on while I uh, prepare the quiz.
All right. So just uh, go to kahoot.it and key in the pin here, and you'll be able to join us for this quiz section. So hopefully everyone is uh, already using Kotlin since it has been uh, introduced for quite some time already. And uh, if not, <laughs> you should really, uh, we, we should already start using Kotlin in, uh, uh, in our app development. Right, we've got nine players now. All right, I'll just start the quiz. Uh, for the rest of you uh, who, who have not joined the, the, the Kahoot, uh, you, you can uh, join any time of any time uh, after we start as well. So not, not to worry. So uh, let's begin. So it'll just be a short, very short quiz for tonight. Let's hope we have fun. Oh. Huh. <laughs> Static for what? Interesting. Ooh, three, three, three. Next question. Hmm, is it one way or the other? Right, it seems like most of you got it right. Hmm. Both can interop. <laughs> so what's the answer? Ooh, close. What do you think? Oh, that's fast. <laughs> right. Hmm, question is a bit long. Last question. In the same package, not the same project, not the same module. All right, most of you got it right. And congratulations to the winner today. Yay. So for the winners, uh, you can email uh, GDG uh, 
GDG, uh, Singapore GDG at gmail.com together with your name, your country, and your mobile number. So we'll be able to uh, email you your uh, voucher codes for uh, today's, uh, for your prizes. So uh, please remember to take a screenshot of this and email us. <laughs> All right. Okay, we have come to the end of our session tonight. So thank you all for staying. So uh, as, as, as always, we are always uh, looking on the lookout for more speakers. So if you have anything interesting that you want to share, you want to, uh, you want to uh, contribute back to the community that we all have uh, gained so much from, please feel free to reach out to us. And we would like to have you uh, do your sharing and uh, use the link at the bottom below to, to reach out to us. And uh, and we'll we'll see how we can uh, arrange something for you to 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 have a platform for you to do your sharing. So once again, this is a shout out to Big O Development. Big O Development is a series of uh, events focusing on uh, tech leadership, career uh, uh, career advancement, and uh, and related topics. So you you will not want to miss this. This is on engineering productivity metrics and morale, and it'll be hosted on. Uh, June 9th of June. So uh, please check them out. You can also check out uh, check out their website, uh, Big O Development. So that's it for tonight. We hope you have fun, learn something new, and enjoy yourself. Um, we'll see you again very soon. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.